Are you oppressed? Are you battling with sickness? Are you struggling with addiction or feeling stuck and you don't know where to turn to? Are you seeking direction or purpose? Or perhaps you are seeking satisfaction and fulfillment? Can God bring a solution to you in just 30 minutes? Oh yes, He can! This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he had the presence of God, he comes to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can Hello, my beautiful brothers and my sisters out there. How are you doing today? My name is Tessie Tani, and this is your Hour of Solution. I decree and I declare that this is your time, your moment, your hour of solution. I pray that the Almighty God will meet you in your personal life, will meet you at the point of your need, every of your heart's desires that align with the will of the Almighty God within the next 30 minutes before this program is over. God will come closer to you than ever before and provide for you the things that you have trusted him for the things that you have been praying for the things that you have been longing for maybe you are not even praying for it maybe you are not even a child of god maybe you are not even a christian but listen i hear the spirit of the lord saying that the mercy of the almighty god is going to pull you closer today to the presence of god and listen wherever the presence of the lord is there is no need there is no want there is no lack the bible says in some 23 the lord is my shepherd i lack nothing when god is your shepherd you have nothing to lack you have nothing to worry about because everything that you need or we ever need has been made available in christ jesus but guess what you need to avail yourself of the promises of god you need to take advantage of the things that the lord has freely given unto you and claim them for yourself i just pray that the almighty God the one who sent me to come here and preach this gospel message the one who told me to tell the people that every time I sit down here to minister his word that it shall be the hour of solution for his dear people i just pray that that same god will visit you today that same god will manifest himself so strong in your life today that same god will cause you to rejoice and celebrate those situations those circumstances that has been giving you sleepless night that has been making you ashamed that has been causing you to worry and be fearful that has made you to be miserable i don't care how big they may seem i don't care how tall they may seem but listen by the power of the almighty God I command them to come crashing down I command them to bow to the name of Jesus I command Satan to take his hands off your destiny right now in the mighty name of Jesus that employment letter that you have been trusting God for I just prophesy that within seven days listen to me I want you to write today's date down within seven days Days, they are going to call you and offer you that employment in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah God bless you children of the most high God who what a privilege it is for me to spend time with you in the Lord in the Word of God hallelujah David says I was glad when they said let us go into the house of the Lord I don't know any other place I would be right now that will make me as excited as I am right now why because I am doing the business of my father because I am running with the message of my father so I just want you to open your heart and receive the 
message of God. You are not here to watch me. You are here to meet with God. And I pray that before the end of this ministration, you shall encounter the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You shall encounter the God that shot the mouth of the lions that the lions could not eat up Daniel. You shall encounter the God that parted the Red Sea. Listen, you shall encounter the God that made a way for me when there seems to be no way. You shall encounter the Almighty God, the great I am that I am, the God who delivered the Israelites from the hands of King Pharaoh. I don't know which power is opposing you. I don't know which power is holding on to your blessings. I don't know which power is acting like Pharaoh in your life. But listen, by the mighty right hand of God, you are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I hear in my spirit that there is somebody who is always afraid. You are always fearful. Uh, you are afraid of the dark. You are afraid at night. You are in bed at night. You are afraid. You are just afraid. I don't know how many attacks you have suffered, but the spirit of fear have enveloped you. You are afraid of your future. You are afraid of everything. I cast that spirit of fear from you, your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, you spirit of fear, you demon of fear, I command you to get out from that sister's life right now. I say, let her go right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. I want you to walk in liberty. I want you to enjoy the sound mind that God has given you. I want you to walk in power. In Jesus' name, amen. Precious Holy Spirit, breathe upon your words. Let our hearts be open to receive. And let us not just hear these words alone, but let us go out there and make them, O oh Lord, become our lifestyle. Let people see us and know that something is different. Somebody is going to ask you, what happened to you? And you're going to tell them, Jesus happened to me. I watched the program, Hour of Solution, on Friday, 9.30 p.m. And Jesus happened to me. Because your situation is going to turn around. I hear in my spirit that your circumstance is going to turn around. God has been working behind the scenes for you. And the things that God has been doing behind the scenes. I hear that they are about to manifest in the physical. So people are going to see you dance and sing. I want you to say to yourself. I want you to say this after me. Say, I shall sing my own song and I shall dance my own dance. I want you to say it again like this. I shall sing my own song. I shall sing my own song of victory. And I shall dance my own dance of celebration. As you have said it, so shall it be unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I go into the word of God for today, I have great news for you. I want you to write this date down. On July 31st, we are going to have Reverend Johnny right here with us and he's going to be ministering alongside with me to bring the word of God to you. Here's something that the Spirit of the Lord laid in my heart to do. A lot of people have so many questions on how to grow their Christian faith, on how to draw closer to God, on how to develop relationship with God. A lot of people want to grow. They are tired of where they are, but they don't know what to do. The Apostle Paul said, the things that I want to do, I do not do those things. But the things that I do not want to do are the things I keep doing. There are so many people. I was once in that stage as well. There are so many people who are at that level where they find themselves struggling to do away with addiction, struggling to do away with drugs, with fornication, with adultery. They are just struggling to live a righteous life. There are so many people who do not know how to study the Bible. There are so many people who do not know how to pray. There are so many people who are just, you know, trying to find purpose for their life. They don't have any purpose. They don't even know why they are here. They want to know what their purpose is. They want to know why they are here, but they don't know how to go about it. So if you are one of those people that have different things in your heart, I want you to send us a message. Ask us any question. On July 
first myself and reverend johnny we are going to be addressing these questions if you don't want us to say your name when when we say your question on the site when we say oh this message is from for example christopher christopher is asking how do i uh, draw closer to god if you don't want your name to be mentioned on the television go ahead feel free you can you know write us your questions and just say i want it to be anonymous i don't want my name to be mentioned on the television but i will really encourage you to take down this phone number and send us any question that you have any kind of question at all ask us anything anything that is in your heart i want you to feel free and send us message you can see my the number for those ministries on the screen but i want to give it to you also two three four nine zero two three four eight four six three one so i want you to take note zero nine zero two three four eight four six three one write it down you can reach us on whatsapp send us a message on whatsapp and ask us the questions that are in your heart you can also follow us on facebook if you don't have a whatsapp you can reach us on facebook messenger um tessitani ministries you can reach us on facebook send us a me your questions ask us anything and i assure you that on july 31st it's going to be an exciting time we are going to be addressing this question so remember ask us anything you will not be judged by your question it is better to ask and receive answers than not to ask at all and walk in confusion and lack of direction god bless you as you do so thank you father hallelujah i want to go into the world today what the spirit of the lord laid on my heart is to tell his people not to refuse to compromise i had in my spirit as i was preparing the sermon it says refuse to compromise so my brother my sister the spirit of the lord is saying to you right now that you should refuse to compromise why is the lord bringing this message the spirit of the lord started to minister to me to let me know that with all that is going on in the world right now so many people who are supposed to be his children who are supposed to be his christians believers they are beginning to compromise their christian faith a lot of people because of pressure they compromise their christian faith so many people when they start with god they are on so much fire but after a while they get pressurized by their environment by the circumstance by the things of this world and that fire that was once you know burning within them is no longer found in their life for those people church become just a tradition so so many christians have begun to compromise their christian faith and there are consequences the bible let us know in Hebrews that we should run with patience the faith that we have been given it says we should run it well so that we can run it and get to the finish line Jesus Christ ran this Christian race and he got to the finish line the Apostle Paul ran the Christian race and he got to the finish line every one of us we are all on a journey we are all running every day we wake up every decision we make we are running we are on a race and we must get to the finish line I pray Pray for everyone under the sound of my voice right now that you will not miss your place in Christ Jesus that on the last day you will not be found wanting you will not be put to shame the Christian race that you have started you will run it well and you will finish well and you will finish strong in Jesus name we pray amen the Spirit of the Lord is saying to somebody watching me right now that you should refuse to compromise the bible says in first corinthians 9 27 the apostle paul is stated clearly he says but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a castaway apostle paul as heavily anointed as he was apostle paul the spirit of the lord was so uh, amused him greatly the bible says that through the hands of apostle paul the spirit of the lord wrought great miracles apostle paul was heavily possessed by the spirit of the almighty god he was heavily anointed the bible let us know that even his anchor even his apron could heal the sick 
Hallelujah. But guess what? He was not carried away by the anointing, the level of the, the heavy anointing of God upon his life. He was not carried away by the miracle signs and wonders that the Spirit of the Lord was performing through him. He was constantly focused on one thing. What is that thing? To run well and to finish well. He said, I put my body under subjection. He said, I do not want to finish preaching to other people and I myself become a castaway. Today we have so many people who flock in and out of the church buildings but they compromise. They are not running well. They are not focused on getting to that finish line. Apostle Paul if he could put himself under subjection to the spirit of God if he could say I don't want to preach to people and become a castaway then who are we not to constantly put ourselves on that check hallelujah every believer ought to make it mandatory to always do a spiritual checkup when i say spiritual checkup what do i mean if you look at physically today when when, when some people are sick and they go to the doctor the doctor would examine them look inside the different places in their body that needs to be looked into they would do x-ray ultrasound to check to make sure that where's this issue coming from hallelujah they are checking why because they know by the godly wisdom that these doctors have they know how the human parts and how the human body is supposed to function or how it's supposed to be but so when they see something that does not match with the original plan how it should be they they are able to detect that something is wrong in this place why because they have the copy they know how the original copy should look like so we as the children of the almighty god it is good for us to be born again it is good for us to attend church services but it is not the best place that god wants us to be the place that god desire for us to be is to work out our salvation every day is to become more and more like christ every day of our life is to strive towards the goal of becoming more and more like christ jesus so that means we must constantly check just the way the doctor would check the original part how it's supposed to be and be able to tell that there is a dysfunction the same way that we believers ought to be able to carry the bible the word of god look through it study it and say how is my lifestyle does it match with what the word of god is saying some people do not bother about what i'm talking about right now some people just think that going to church building on sunday and wednesday and friday is enough let me tell you it is good to serve god it is good to be involved in different church activities but church attendance church activities can never replace and we never replace the intimate profound vibrant relationship that god wants his children to have with him hallelujah with all that is going on right now so many people are not able to check themselves with the word of god to ensure that there is alignment this is why it's so easy for so many people to compromise we are living in times where you go to church and you hear that it is okay for two people to be living together when they are not yet married we are living in times where people say it is okay to be a gay christian we are living in times where people you see brothers and sisters engaging in fornication and nobody tells them that they are committing sin why because most people want to be politically correct they don't want to offend anybody my god if we continue like this it is not going to lead us anywhere because god will never change his word he will never change his word the bible already let us know in galatians 5 22 the fruits of the spirit and the fruit of the flesh and when he talks about the fruit of the flesh he says those that practice these things shall not see the kingdom of god so are you serving god just to fulfill all righteousness that you go to church buildings or are you serving god because you are hungry you are longing you are desiring to meet with your savior one day and be with him and reign with him forever hallelujah 
I'm reminded of a sister who went for a checkup and the doctor told her that she has cancer and she said no how come that she said she has been feeling pain for a while now but every time she feels pain she just takes some little painkiller and then the doctor said you should have come since for a proper checkup and the doctor said we are afraid and we are sorry that your cancer is at stage four that means it has started inside her body and it has been eating around and spreading around and it got to stage four but when she was just feeling discomfort and pain and tiredness and weakness she just takes some painkillers and rest and go to bed she didn't knew that something was going on inside her body if a little sin is not properly taken care of do not get me wrong i feel for that sister right but i'm just using it as an example to tell you to open your eyes to see that if little sin is not properly taken care of it can deteriorate and it can lead into bigger ones and it can affect every other part of the body and it can affect the whole body and it can kill that person hallelujah if you look at the bible david he compromised but when david compromised there was consequences and listen when he compromised he did not just do it in one day he started with his eyes seeing uriah's wife having a bath from that eyes he started thinking about how he could you know uh, um, lie with her from there after seeing it with his eyes and thinking about it in his mind he carried out the act he all he wanted to do probably was just to sleep or lie with her from lying with her discovered that she got pregnant and that led him to commit murder so one little scene of his eyes that he could not check out of his mind right away he allowed the thoughts to dwell in his mind and then that led to fornication that led to murder he killed somebody so what i'm trying to say here is spiritual checkup is very important it doesn't matter how long you've been in christ it doesn't matter your position in church it doesn't matter the title before your name be it an apostle also be it an evangelist, be it a prophet, a prophetess, be it a pastor, whatever it is, be it a church or uh, head of department, even if there is no title before your name, whether you've been in church for a long time, whether you just started, whether you're six months old in your Christian faith, whether you're 50 years old, it doesn't matter. Each and every one of us must at every point in time sit down, look at the word of God, not studying it because you want to preach it or talk to other people about it, but study it because you want to align your lifestyle with it God is not desiring for us to just be good in one area and say well I understand you are good at giving but you're not really good at hospitality that's okay you are human you're not perfect oh you are good at you know hospitality but you are not good at giving or you you are still dealing a lot with anger you are good at hospitality but you have anger issues that's okay I understand God is not desiring for us to be at that level where he understands God's desire is for us to build up ourselves daily his desire is for us to become more and more like our precious Lord Jesus hallelujah we live in a world right now where Christianity has become a thing of just fashion just it's so fashionable to say I'm a Christian but the lifestyle does not match with the Word of God so I am here to encourage somebody today to not compromise, refuse to compromise. Say no matter what is happening in the world around me right now, even though people are falling up by the wayside, I am going to keep my Christian faith. It is my number one priority. Take every other thing from me, but do not take my faith, do not take my Christian faith from me. Refuse to compromise hallelujah little sins things that we consider as little sins they lead into bigger ones and they draw us away from god they, they cut us away from god that is not the desire of the almighty god god loves you so much he wants to spend time here with you and he wants to spend eternity with you 
so refuse to let anything take that away from you work it out work, work out your salvation with fear and trembling if you look at something something compromised in the bible listen to this the bible says in judges 16 20 i'm going to read it quickly it says and she said the philistines be upon this something and he awoke out of his sleep and said i will go out as at other times before and shake myself and he wished not that the lord has departed from him something already compromised but he did not know that the Lord as the spirit of the Lord has departed from him when Delilah told him that the Philistines were coming he said I am just going to get up I am just going to shake myself as before but guess what he was he did it he got up he was still shaking but the spirit of the Lord was no longer there why because he compromised so we have so many people who still dress up, who still go to church, who are still in every church service, who still make so much noise, who still dance and shout and praise. But guess what? God is not just looking for all those activities. God is looking for the one whose heart is truly with him. So refuse to compromise. That is what the spirit of the Lord has asked me to tell somebody here today. No matter how little you may think any sin may be, if God hates sin, you must hate sin hallelujah the spirit of the lord had left something yet he did not even know it so we can get so used to our slow backsliding that we do not even notice that the spirit of the lord has departed so i pray for everyone under the influence of my voice right now that the spirit of the lord will not depart from you that you will live in such a way that you will not grieve the holy spirit i pray that the power to resist every kind of temptation that the lord will grant unto you today in the mighty name of Jesus the will the strong will the power the fear of the Lord for you to refuse to do anything that will hurt God let that fear of the Lord be upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus I know that when somebody is telling you let's go to the places that we used to go to the power to resist that and say the bad things I used to do from today I'm not gonna do them anymore why because I am afraid of my God I pray that that spirit to resist will come upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus thank you Heavenly Father listen as I go I want to leave this word with you the God's will to see anybody born again is not just for the person to make the confession but for the person to be born again to turn away from their old lifestyle and turn to a new life with God the power the grace the ability the strength hallelujah to turn away completely from your old lifestyle of sin to fully turn to God and follow him wherever it leads you and do only the things that pleases God I just pray for that power to rest upon you today in Jesus name we pray amen as i round up i want to pray for those who are watching me right now who have not yet given their life to christ i always tell people that it is suicidal for anyone to refuse to accept the lord jesus christ because we don't know when jesus is going to come we don't even know how many days you have here to live on earth so taking chances to say i will do it tomorrow ah my god it is very dangerous it is very suicidal it is like somebody like a man who sees a trailer coming and say I'm going to stand in the middle and let the trailer hit me the person is actually committing suicide that way anybody who sees that Jesus is the only one that can save from internal damnation and yet refuse to accept the Lord Jesus Christ is like that man who is just standing in the middle of the road and say let the trailer hit me that is suicide it is suicidal to refuse to reject the Lord Jesus Christ because there is no salvation anywhere else there is no other one or any other power that can save you so i want you to make up your mind today and say lord this message is for me thank you for bringing this opportunity in my way he loves you that is the reason he wants to save you right now so i want you to stretch forth your hands towards the screen say lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god and i confess that jesus is lord please have mercy on me forgive me of every sin i have committed 
tempted in the past please from today and set me to become your child and I declare also that you are now my Lord and Savior thank you for forgiving me thank you for the blood of Jesus that has just washed me clean and wiped all my sins away from today I am now born again in Jesus name we have prayed amen father I thank you for those ones that just gave their life to you precious Lord Jesus I pray that you draw them closer to yourself I pray that you give them the hearts to follow you I pray that you put your hunger within them I pray that you tie them to you those ones that you have saved today father let oh Lord them not go back again to the world give them the zeal oh Lord and the passion to serve you and put your fear within their hearts oh Lord in Jesus name we have prayed amen hallelujah congratulations if you just gave your life to Christ I want you to find a Bible believing church and start to worship God in spirit and in truth and remember that I love you and God loves you even more I will see you again on Friday next week remember to text us any question on our whatsapp line God bless you thank you for being a part of this program join us same time next week for another fresh episode